we want to you want to hit the button we're live i hit the button <laughs> guys he normally well do you guys notice like oh well there we go never mind this isn't so exciting anymore we were flipped and it was weird that we were on stop doing it you're gonna make people nauseated stop we're All flipped right. on our we're flipped on our sides and we're flipped on our rolls today i got to hit the go live button which i've never gotten to do before um mr tech is always the one in control and i decided to flip the script on that so uh say good morning if you're popping on we're so glad you're here we're gonna dig into something really quick for you guys this morning um We've talked a lot about keyword cannibalization in the context of it impacting your rankings and not being exactly um, what Google's looking for anymore, especially with helpful content update. Things are changing. Google is looking for content that is deemed helpful. And one of the issues that we've seen, especially on Carrot Site users, is that the blogs are cannibalizing your website on your keywords. You have um, repetitive content, unhelpful content, so many different things that are kind of hurting you and your rankings. Um, we've gone through this with several clients. We've gone through this with you guys personally of what does it look like to delete those blog posts or remove those blog posts or the process of cleaning up those blog posts and what impact does it then have on your business and your rankings? We, a lot of people weren't sure. We weren't sure at first, is this going to be the solution to the problem? Is this what's holding things back? Um, and we've been sharing those case studies with you guys as we've been collecting data to say, yep, this is what it is. This is why it's hindering you and here are the results that we're seeing. Jason did a phenomenal, phenomenal case study with one of our clients who was really struggling. His keyword rankings were just stuck and we were beating our head against heads against the wall. Um, I should give Jason credit. He's the one that was fighting this battle, trying to understand why when everything else that we're doing is more and more and more SEO work, more and more for our client, certain things are just stuck. And this, this was one thing we couldn't avoid. We had to take a look at, at these and determine if this was possibly the cause of the problem. We hate to take anything away that someone has put time in producing or taken the time to figure out. Um, but here are kind of the facts of this case study. So this was on a carrot website, obviously the motivated seller template. The size was targeting a mid-sized metro area, a population of around uh, 750,000 people. And there were a total of 399 blog posts on this site when we took over the client and when Jason started cracking into their SEO. So their keywords were extremely stuck for the pages that were actually indexed. And I think Jason's gonna talk a little bit more about what he saw in that capacity. Most of the rankings were stalled out um at the bottom of page one and somewhere on page two <laughs> and if you guys don't know the difference in the conversion rate yes getting the first page of google is absolutely your priority your first goal but there are significant differences in the conversion rate of being at the top of page one versus the bottom of page one and i actually have a really cool graphic i'll drop it in here later for you guys to see what you can expect even just being the difference between position one and position seven or eight how much more traffic you get from that um, not all of the, the city pages were indexed, which means Google didn't even really recognize that they were there and the site lacked kind of authority. Um, there were SEO tweaks that needed to be made. Um, but it was, it was super clear, I guess, once Jason really started digging in that those blog pages, um, by utilizing a tool that we talked about a couple weeks back, Screaming Frog and some other tools that he has, that the blog posts were what was really killing this website. So Jace, do you wanna talk about the action steps that you took on this? Um, kind of how you determined that this was the problem and what you did, obviously getting rid of those posts, how you determined which ones to get rid of and how quickly you saw results. Yeah, um, thank you for the intro there. You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, so, <laughs> The problem that we'll be talking about today, I mean, is is what we're seeing with just about everybody's website. Um, if you have a carrot site, you probably have posted some of those carrot content packs um, and you didn't change a thing on them. And to be honest, that was perfectly fine, you know, last year and the years before, because it didn't matter. There was no helpful content update. Um, it was just more content for your website and it wasn't it wasn't a vampire it wasn't leeching the life out of your website at that time um and now it is what we're seeing with just about everybody um so 
this client obviously kind of had the same problem when he came to us. Like he had a bunch of city pages built. Um, he wasn't ranking for him. He used to be ranking a little bit higher and then things kind of started to drop off. He was at the bottom of page two um, and excuse me, the bottom of page one. And then some of this stuff was tailing off to page two and even page three. And then there was a lot of things. Um, even some of his city pages were not even indexed to begin with. Like he could not get them indexed. Um, so I had an idea of what was happening before I even looked at it because this is literally almost every audit that we do right now. This is the same exact problem that we are seeing is just a massive blog full of these carrot content packs. And most of them are not indexed and they're all keyword cannibalizing, um, all of your, your keywords, your, your main, your main stuff that you're actually trying to rank. It has the same URL structure, same keywords on it, and it's it's just sucking the life out of it. Real quick, for those who haven't been on our live before, missed one about keyword cannibalization. Can you um, describe to them exactly what that means? So, in this situation, um, what we're talking about is like you have your city page, right? That you're trying to rank for, let's say, sell my house fast, St. Louis. Right. So your, your URL structure is like, you know, Jason buys and then your page, which would be sell my house fast St. Louis. Right. So that that's your URL. Right. It's one of the most uh, dominant pieces of the algorithm is what is in your URL. So having your keywords in your URL is very important. But then also your um, the title of the page might be sell my house fast St. Louis. Your H1 might be sell my house fast St. Louis. OK, which is great. That is the actual page that you want to rank for the keyword, sell my house fast St. Louis and we buy house of St. Louis and whatever, right? That's the page you want to rank. The problem is inside of your carrot settings, you have all of your location data. And then when you post those con uh, carrot content packs, um, it is using the, uh, the short codes to take your location data and throw it all into your URL structure and all the keywords on those blog posts. So then all of those blog posts, you end up having 10, 20, 30 blog posts that all have very, very similar URL structure, which is sell my house fast in St. Louis or sell my fat, sell my house fast in STL, sell my house fast for cash in St. Louis. You have all of these URLs that are almost the same exact thing. And all the content, all those blog posts are almost the same exact thing. They constantly repeat all the same keywords. They have the same H1s. They have the same page titles almost. Those are all taking juice away from your actual page that you want to rank. Because you want one page on your website to hone in on a set of keywords. When you have 100 pages that are going after the same set of keywords, Google doesn't know what to do. Okay, It's not helpful content. People don't know what to do. All right. Um, you know, when Google's trying to say, you know, we're going to rank this page over this page, like there's nothing that is different about them. Right. To an extent, there might be a few words that are different, but it's all basically duplicate content and not helpful content. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So Jason kind of asked you guys a couple days ago, would anyone be interested in seeing this information? Everyone's like, yes, we need to know how to apply this to our own businesses, et cetera. Um, so he posted the screenshot of it. And I think like anything, especially me, um, I see the data and I see the screenshots and I go, well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever that means, cool. And then I kind of glaze over it. So let's actually take a look really quick. We're not going to go super deep into this. We've had a lot of long podcasts as of late with some great guest speakers. So we're going to keep this one short this morning. But let's actually take a look at those screenshots, see what they mean, understand what Jason um, saw in that data, and then how it changed just by cleaning up those blog posts. So you want to show them the screenshots that you posted? Yes. Uh, this layout is different for a second. Hold on. You're good. Morning, Hayden. Don't worry. We relate to sometimes it's just those mornings here in the Midwest. It was definitely a very um, overcast, rainy kind of morning, which I do love, but it just gets things rolling a little slow. So no worries. We we are just getting started. All right. So this this uh, screenshot is in the case study post inside the group. Um, 
you can always find it in there. Um, so it's in, it's inside there, but let's take a look at it real quick and let me blow this up. All right. Because basically what we have here, this guy had a bunch of city pages on his website. Okay. And as you can see, all the keywords that we're tracking over here, um, basically we use the sell my house fast and the we buy houses as a barometer. Um, and hopefully you can see this. So these are all sell my house fast. We buy houses and it just goes on and on and on and on. And these are what's hidden here is all of his different cities that he had built out for all these different city pages. Right? So we know if we're ranking for sell my house fast and we're ranking for, we buy houses for a certain city, we're probably going to be ranking for all the other keywords as well, like cash for homes and, um, home buyers and, you know, all the, all the different variations that there are. Right. So we're talking a lot of city pages here. And if we come on over here, we can see that, and in the, in the, uh, case study post, we kind of describe what we did and when we did it. Okay. Um, 30 days ago, we deleted all of the blog posts. Okay. And we resubmitted a site map. Or we didn't delete all of them. We deleted all the carrot content pack ones, the ones that were actually violating um, the keyword cannibalization rules. He had a bunch of other uh, blog posts that were, were fine. They did not violate that stuff. Um, and most of those were actually indexed. So we kind of left those on there. Okay. Um, but as you can see, a month ago, this guy's ranking uh, for this keyword was at 12. And now it's at 1. Um, it was at two, it was at three. Now these are all at one. Um, and you can see everything that's just gone up. Everything, you know, all these number ones are coming from five, from three, position four, position three. And like Danielle said before, guys, don't forget that because there's a lot of people that think, oh, I'm on page one. This is perfectly fine. No big deal. Right. The difference between moving up from position five and position four and position three to position one is absolutely night and day difference. It's it's a groundbreaking difference. Um, I, I forget what the stat is, but I think it's like 70% of the clicks come from the top three positions. Okay. And like 30% of that is like number one position. Um, so it's insane. So as you can see, I mean, just everything from the month after we deleted everything, it just got all recrawled, resubmitted, and it just went, it shot right up. Like a whole bunch of these just from six to number two, number seven to number two, 13 to three, 21 to three, like yeah. just a big, big difference. 38 to five. Like, I mean, these are all brand new keywords that now he's ranking for and he's getting traffic from. Um, new leads. I mean, people are finding them. And the crazy thing is we're not even done with the optimizations on this. Like we've only done the first round of on-page optimizations. We like to do um, one round of it to kind of see where it lands, see what Google's liking in that different SERP. And then we'll do another round of it to move it even higher. Um, so that's, you know, it's exciting just to see this in just 30 days after deleting those keyword cannibalizing posts. So Let's see what this says. Not sure if it applies, but what's the best way to transition to a neat, new keyword friendly page? Versus the keyword dump page. I think that was Hayden's uh, comment I popped up there. Um, let's see. A new keyword friendly page versus the keyword dump page. I, I'm not exactly sure what you mean there. Um, what, what's the keyword dump page? Yeah. I don't know if you can explain that a little I bit. I wonder if he means like the page that you're primarily trying to rank for that keyword or all the juices. I'm just speculating. Hayden, if you can, uh, clarify just a little bit for us, we can dig into that. Um, guys, sorry for the, uh, spammer that decided to blow up our, um, little feed here. He's since been removed. He will no longer be participating in our lives. We had a spammer? Yeah, we had a spammer. It's been a hot minute since we've had one of those. So if you're watching this and you go, why did I get tagged in this 75 times? You can thank our dear friend that is now blocked. So 
You're welcome. <laughs> he said, uh, moving to a focused keyword page instead of having a bunch of random keywords. So I'm, I'm assuming you have a bunch of random pages that are all going after different keywords. Um, first off, if those are blog posts that are going after a whole bunch of keywords that are related, um, you know, and you're wanting to go to one page, you know, your city page is your transactional page. That That's the page you're most likely trying to rank. You're, you're not necessarily trying to rank your uh, blog post for like sell my house fast in or we buy houses, that type of thing. Um, blog posts in my eyes are more reserved for ranking for like, um, you know, more, more of the broader terms, more of the generic terms that don't have the cities in them because Google knows where you're located and they can feed that post to the people that are searching in your area, if that makes sense. Um, so make your blog post more about, you know, how to sell your house in probate or something like that, but not sell your house in probate in St. Louis. Right. And then you're, you're killing all of your URL structure and things like that. Um, but having just one good city page where you have a, a good amount of content, um, you know, really hitting on all the different keyword clusters and topics, um, you know, for like the sell my house fast, we buy houses, cash home buyers, putting them in your H1, put them in your H2s, that type of thing. Just having one good page for each city. I mean, that's ultimately what the goal is. Um, and then, of course, when you have these other pages, you if you decide to delete them, you can uh, 301 redirect them to that new page. Um, and that that can help as well, um, because if you have all these different pages, especially if some of them are indexed, um, just if they're indexed, that doesn't mean that's a necessarily a good thing. Um, even if you have five pages that are indexed and they're still cannibalizing your main transactional page, you know, 301 redirect those to the main page, right? Don't just delete them. If they're if they're crawled but not indexed inside of Google Search Console, you can delete them, of course, because nobody can ever find them because they're not indexed. But if they are indexed, 301 redirect them to the actual page that you want to rank. So hopefully that makes sense. Good stuff. <clears throat> Real quick, guys, we're going to wrap up. I did find the stats for you on the different positions on that first page of Google. So again, just within being on the first page of Google, position one, two, three, four, five, down to 10, because those are your first. 10 positions. Position number one gets 31.73% of the traffic. Position two, 24. Position three drops to 18, four. So we're still talking top four, which many of you would be very excited to be in the top four. Four drops to 13%. So can you imagine the difference from 30% to 13% in just the top four positions, then all the way down to being in position um, number 10. So still the first page of Google, still super excited about that. But the 10th position, so the bottom of the first page of Google is only getting about 3%. So there is a significant difference. Don't sleep on the fact that, oh, I'm on the first page of Google for these keywords. You have opportunity to improve and grab more of your local market um, by getting to that upper, those upper positions. One more question from him, a little more detail. What about my homepage? Having a bunch of related keywords doesn't sound like that's a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends how your site is set up, like what you're trying to rank for on your home page. If you're if on your home page, you're trying to rank for, um, you know, one of your cities, that's fine. But if you, then you have a whole bunch of blogs that are using that same keyword um, and using it in the URL, the H1, the H2s, and it just keeps repeating it. If it's if it's basically the the carrot content blog posts, like you just posted them years ago. I mean, yeah, you're 99% chance you're keyword cannibalizing your homepage. Um, and that's not a good thing. Um, it happens yeah. all the time. And guys, we want to be super clear. We know we've been hitting heavy about these carrot um, packs. This is not a dig on carrot. We are still very pro carrot. 
almost all of our clients are on Kara websites because we deal exclusively with real estate investors. This is something that Carrot has had for a long period of time, long before Google's helpful content update, et cetera. Um, so this isn't anything that Carrot did maliciously to you guys. This isn't anything that they did wrong. At the time that this was something that they created for you guys, this was part of how you did this. This was part of how you ranked. Um, it's just, as Google changes, as everything changes as far as what's a priority in ranking, this is something we need to shift with and we wanna make sure that you guys are aware of it too. It's something that's so easy for you guys to clean up on your own by removing um, that we don't want it to be something that holds you back. So just please know, we do still love Carrot very much. So this is not a dig at Carrot or anything that they offer. We think it's an incredible platform, phenomenal for real estate investors. We just wanna make sure that um, that you guys are in the know up to the minute of how to be successful. Definitely deleted all the care blogs and started to put new content. That's awesome. And as long as you're putting that new content together, think um, if you're taking the time to do it, think about what's helpful. Think about the Google's helpful content and what they would deem as something that's relevant that can help people in that way. So yeah. Jason, is, is there anything else you want to add on that? No, I was just going to add like, um, no, I was just going to add. <laughs> no, I was. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, like th th it's not a diss on carrot um, because we do audits all the time and we come across regular WordPress sites that are doing the same exact thing. Um, there's a lot of WordPress sites out where, you know, people have basically done the same exact type of blog post where it just says the same thing and, you know, the, the same stuff is happening to them. So it's not because you're on carrot. It's just one of those things. Um, also inside of carrot. Now, when you go to your blog post, I just noticed it last night. I don't know exactly when they pushed this update out, but now on your blog post, it tells you if it was a carrot content pack post. And now it tells you how, what percentage of it is, uh, unique content. So it has like a little percentage oh. thing. And it says there's a little pop up and I think it says um, we recommend at least 30 percent is unique content. So if you go in there and you add some you add like a paragraph or something, um, it's going to say like, oh, you've you know, you've edited it, but it's only 10 percent or it's only 15 percent unique content, something like that. So they are trying to help um, along those lines. But That's awesome. I, I'm just finding it much easier, especially if you have a hundred or 200 posts. And if they're not indexed, there's no point in editing all of those. You have way better things to do with your time. Um, just delete them. So yeah, yeah want to make sure I'm not creating the same issues. Yeah. On, um, that was just, Hayden. His first post said that he deleted all the carrots and he's starting to put new content together and he wants to make sure he's not creating the same issue that he just deleted. So yeah, definitely. Um, Hayden, if you have questions, if you are going through and creating your content and you want to know specifics on anything, just message us or drop a comment and we can give you further detail um, as far as any questions that you have. If you want to make sure that it's good content or not, we're always here to help you with that. No problem. Absolutely. All right. I think this one's a wrap. You good? I'm good. Yeah. Um, just, you know, if you guys haven't seen the case study. I think I did put it in here. Yeah, I think you dropped the link at the top of the yeah, comments. There's, there's a link in the comments to the case study. You can go and you can take a look at it. Um, everything that I wrote out about it, you can see the screenshot, um, kind of review it, that type of thing. But um, this is just something that we're seeing every single day. Almost every single audit is the same way. Like you can almost see it in Ahrefs when you go and plug in a site. You can watch their organic traffic, and when the helpful content update comes out, it just boop, it just drops off. <laughs> like it's it's like a night and day thing. Like you yeah, can plug in an Ahrefs, and I can see it like instantly yeah. before I even look at the website, and I'd be like, "This guy's got a lot of blogs on his website because I know exactly what happened." Yeah. So it's just, uh, yeah, I'm a master of uh, trial and error. That and that's what we do every day too. Like we're in yeah. the trenches every day looking at these sites seeing what's going on, running, you know, our, our tools through everything and whatnot. And, you know, it, it's pretty easy to pick out nowadays. So. Yep. Yes, sir. All right, guys. 
Well, if you have any questions, don't let the unknown of this keep you from taking action, getting something done. If this is still overwhelming, if it's still too techy, if it's whatever you need, just reach out, let us know, drop a comment. You guys, Jason is phenomenal when it comes to reaching out. The amount of time that he spends in his day filming um, tutorials for you guys, answering your questions, he does a ton to be here in this community. I do too, but let's be real. He's the genius in the group. So um, yeah, drop, drop your questions. There's no excuses. We are here to help as always. Hayden, you have a good day and week too. Um, yeah, let us know what we can do for you guys and we'll be here next week. I believe next week we actually have is that when Jason Blackburn is joining us? I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe I didn't think about this sooner, but guys, Jason Blackburn from Instant Offer Engine is joining us next week on the live. I can't believe next week is March 1st, but it is. So um, if you want to talk about that awesome tool that Jeremy Resmer talked about on his two-part live with us that helped him convert more leads and get more deals, uh, the owner is going to be joining us. So, yep. All right, guys, we're done. That's a wrap. <laughs> we'll see you next week with Jason Blackburn joining us to talk about getting more leads and better converting leads. All right, guys. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. It.